I'm Kim Caster with Kim Caster Art. Today, what I want to do is help people get started in painting in acrylic. Hopefully, yeah, my light's good enough here. So, what I want to do is start out with all the fundamentals. Uh, if you've painted before, you'll probably know a lot of these things. Hopefully, we'll bring to light some things you don't know. So, let's get started. First off, if you're going to paint in acrylics, you should always remember to use Gesso. Okay? You can get Gesso at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, any art supply store, Amazon, wherever. And always use at least two coats. Now, if you're going to do portraits, you'll find out that the smoother the surface, the easier it's going to be on you. So, this is a canvas panel. Very thin, as you can see. These are great for painting on. I paint on them quite frequently. And you'll find that the texture is pretty smooth. This has got plastic on it, but it's pretty smooth. So a couple coats, is, thin coats is great. Good way to start. If you're using canvas, like this, a small 8x10 panel or whatever size you're using. First thing you want to do before you even guess so is that you want to make sure this panel is tight. Now some of them come with little clips you can put in little wooden wedges you can put in here to help tighten them up and you can use them if you like to but there's an easier way to do it. Very simply get yourself a spray bottle of water and you're going to need one of these for painting and acrylic anyway so go ahead and get one. They're pretty inexpensive. First thing you do Spray some water in the back, all over it, get it good and wet, just like so. Spread it out with your hand, spread it all out, get it all up under the wood, everywhere. And you may have to do this a couple of times. Once you spread the water out, just tap it. You'll actually hear, you'll hear the sound of it getting tighter and tighter and tighter. That will save you a lot of headaches later on. And the great thing about using water is you can use this same method on a painting you've already done. I purposely kept this painting I did because you can hear it's loosening up. Very simple fix to that. Same thing. Whether it's oil or acrylic, you can spray it with water. Same thing. Spread it around. And this happens more than you think. Get a little more water here. Especially on the edges. You want to get it up under that wood as much as you can. Spread that water around. And you saw how it thumpy it sounded. Now it's tightening right up. Isn't that beautiful? So instead of having a saggy painting, You've got a tight painting again. And if it's in the frame, it doesn't matter. You can still do the same thing. Now it's nice and tight. You can hear that nice and tight. Tight as a drum. That's what you want, like a drum. Okay. Let's go to the next thing. We've put our couple coats of guess on one. Let it dry in between coats. Two or three coats, whatever you prefer. If you're going to do a a portrait, like I said, you're going to want it good and smooth. And another little trick is, if you're using canvas, sometimes when you buy the cheaper canvas, and if you're just starting out, you're trying to save on that budget, you can take some, like a 220 sanding paper, 220 grit sanding paper, in between coats, lightly sand it. Because sometimes these little cheap canvases get a little bit of a bump here and there. You can sand them down, very lightly sand it. Then you go ahead and put another coat of gesso on it. And if you want to do another coat, it's not smooth enough, lightly sand it again, and then put your final coat on. However many coats that you need to get it as smooth as you like. You'll find that doing portraits especially, you want it to be as smooth as possible. When I started doing some portraits, it made a big difference. Because I was thinking, well, the 
canvas is primed already, so it should be good. So I try to paint on them, and then little bumps sometimes, especially when you get to the really fine details of a portrait, like the eyes and the nose and stuff like that. You get a little bump in that canvas where the eye is, where it's forming. You'll fight with that thing constantly before you can get it right. So do yourself a favor and prepare your canvas to paint properly on. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. When you're using acrylic paint, you should always use two glasses of water. Now these are have the little strainers in the bottom of them. I like to use them, but you don't necessarily have to use them for acrylic. But I recommend using at least the one you want to clean your brush with. This one's had dirtier water. Um, have that little strainer in the bottom. The other one, just put clean water in. And you want to use your dirty one to keep washing your brush with. And then you can go ahead and hit the clean water with it. To make sure it's a little bit cleaner. And you can also use that clean water as your medium for when you want to just thin out your paint a little bit. And not worry about getting contamination from that dirty water. Because believe me, if you, if you are painting and use that just that same thing of water and you pull out some water in here and mix it with white or another other colors it's going to it's going to affect your colors and when you get on your painting you're going to be wondering why it doesn't look quite right it's because you use dirty water to mix your paints with it makes a big difference okay another thing is your palette now I normally use a regular palette, but I'm very familiar with using the spray bottle, and I spray my paint every now and then. You know, every four or five minutes or whatever, I'll, I'll hit it with some spray. When I'm painting, I'll also I'll lightly spray the canvas with some water. Another little trick, you can't do it on the panel, the board one, but on a canvas, before you start painting, spray the back with water. You can spray it pretty good with water and a light coat on the front. It'll help keep your paints wet. And especially when you want to blend. So you want to blend the sky in and stuff like that. And blend in your clouds and whatever. You want to keep that as wet as you can. As damp as you can. Not real wet, but damp. So it won't let the paint dry too quickly. And you can blend better. That, that will be a big help to you. And, you know, it doesn't matter. You can use just a small brush for putting your guests on. Even use it for paint. I use this brush here for painting skies and whatever. Also, another tip I want to give is use extender. Now, if you have paints that, you, that tend to dry quicker, and some colors do dry quicker, you want to use some of this retarder. And this here is made by Golden. Golden's a great brand. Works good. Just put a drop or two in your paint, depending on how much paint you got. If you're using just a small amount, just a drop will do usually. And just mix it in with a palette knife. And this will extend the time of the paint, keep it from getting dry too quickly. So that's not a good thing to help. So, another, another good tip is, after you put your gesso on and it's dry, the very first thing you want to do is to tint your canvas. Now, say, say blue. I'm just picking blue because, say, I'm doing a landscape and I want the sky to be blue anyway, so I'm going to lightly paint this whole canvas with blue. Just as quickly as I can. It doesn't really matter the lines in it or whatever. Just spread it out. And that is because. Most people don't know it, but you can get white blind. It's called a, like a snow blind. When you when you look at your palette, especially a bigger one, you'll notice if you're staring at that white all the time, it makes a huge difference because it kind of blinds your eyes to the true colors that you're working with. So color it with something, whether it's uh, burnt umber or blue, light blue, or any color you want. It really doesn't matter, but it'll help you immensely to pre-color that canvas and that's especially for portraits 
And when I do a portrait, I'll you can draw the portrait on there, get all that done, and just lightly go over it with a color. Normally, a lot of people will use burnt umber to just thin it out and just need a really thin coat just to make a, get a color over the top of that white. Very important. Okay. Next thing is uh, put your put your colors in the right spots, like your cool colors and your earth tones together. So if you don't know what cool colors are, it's like cool colors would be like cold or the sky. All the you know sky colors and things like that, maybe greens and yellows. Um, you know, earth tones would be more like browns and and your darker colors. Try to keep them in the same areas on the palette. That really will help you a lot. And if you make a habit of putting them in the same spot, when you paint, you automatically go to those colors that you want. Don't be afraid to mix your colors that's one thing that I had to learn later on because I didn't have anyone to teach me I've been painting for 40 years and there wasn't any internet then there wasn't any YouTube and stuff like that to get help from I, I had one artist friend and all he did was abstract so he really wasn't a whole lot of help with me so uh, try to mix your colors and of course you can buy almost any color you want but most colors right out of the tube are not what you really want you may have to darken them or lighten them or add another color to them like raw sienna you may want to darken it or lighten it and you can make any of them other colors with the primary colors and sit down one day take the primary colors which is you know red blue yellow um, all your different primary colors and mix your own colors like um, yellow and blue make green well how you make the different colors of green you add a little bit of maybe black just a tiny bit of black if you make green will make like an olive green if you want to make a brighter green you add more yellow to it and you can get pretty much any color green you want by just adding different things to it you can make brown you can make um, violet magenta you can make any of those colors from your primary colors sit down and, and just experiment with it that's what I can tell you is it does help a lot with your color mixing eventually you will be mixing paint and, and not even realizing what you're doing because you've just done it so much that you automatically just grab the colors you need. And, and that's a big help in itself. So, <clears throat> another little tip is, now I do portraits, which I haven't been doing them for a real long time, but uh, take your time with them and realize that when you're using acrylics, you're not using a one coat paint. Even with the landscape, you're probably going to end up doing multiple coats. And especially with a portrait. I When I do portraits, I probably do three or four coats of paint, like glazing, basically. Payne's Gray is one color. I don't normally advertise any colors, but Payne's Gray, this is by Golden, you'll find is a way better go-to if you need like black color. Because most of the time, you don't want something that's totally black. It's very rare you ever do. This is this is a it's more of a black, and you can use it like a black, but it's not that dead beat dark, dark, dark black. Especially if you're doing portrait painting, I found this actually this color actually helped me make way better portraits, way better portraits. So keep that in mind too. And course that may not work for you but it does work for me very well using a wet palette like I said before I basically don't use one but 
If you want to make one, really it's basically just a tray. Put about three or four layers of paper towel down. Wet it really well. You don't want it too wet. You can always drain a little bit off if you need to. Get something with a little bit of a, a raise around the edges of it. Uh, you can buy like a Tupperware container with a lid. That's even better because you can put the lid on and keep your paints overnight with no problem. 24 hours. But put on top of that like some tracing paper or something like that. That works really well. And then you can mix on, mix your paints on top of that tracing paper. And just cut it to the size of whatever your palette is. And that works great. So, don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's the biggest thing I've ever seen in painting is people being afraid to make a mistake. You get to, you'll get to a point in a painting, and this will happen pretty often, we get in the middle here more, is you'll get a painting and it'll look beautiful. And you go, well, I need to do this and that, and you're scared to death to do it. Just do it. Be brave and just do it. And we all go through that. Every artist out there goes through that same thing. They get to a point and they're scared they're going to mess up their painting. Well, you can still fix it. If you mess it up, you can fix it. You may get a little discouraged a little bit, but you can fix the painting. But go for it. Just do it. That's how you learn. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. And just so you all know, don't be under any illusion that you're going to be able to paint overnight. Because you're not. And that's, that's reality. It takes a lot of practice and patience and perseverance. Also, my other best recommendation is buy good quality brushes. You can get, you can get cheap brushes. And, and I know it's easy to... It's, I said the same thing. I'm on a budget. I can't afford them. But you know what? If you buy cheap brushes and they don't last very long, you just keep go buying more cheap brushes, you might as well have bought the good brushes anyway. And you don't need a ton of brushes to get started. You know? You know, a fan brush. Maybe a flat brush. You know, an oval type of brush. You want your liner brushes. And you may want a little bit of a bigger brush. You can get these at the hardware store. And they're pretty cheap. And they work very well. And, you know, just just get what you can afford. But try to get the, the, the best ones that you can. You know, get a mixing knife to mix your paints with. That helps. I mix Most artists will mix their paint with their brush a lot as they're going. But... If you're going to mix a bigger batch, it's better to have the mixing knife. You can get those in plastic that are a lot cheaper. You know, then that's not a problem. I remember when I first started painting, and this uh, was when I started painting in oil. And I painted in oil for many, many years before I ever touched acrylic. In fact, I fought touching acrylic. Because I knew acrylic drew, dried really fast. You know, I was so used to having the benefit of oil. It would stay wet for a, a long time. I could just keep painting and painting and adding on to it, whatever. And believe me, it's way... It's way nicer that you can just not worry about the drying part. But if you get used to the acrylics, you'll be fine. I started out painting wet on wet. That's right, Bob Ross, Bill Alexander, things like that. And be careful about that. If you people are painting wet on wet now, that's great. And you know, it's I agree that it's a great place to start. You can get very good results fairly quickly. You can get a really nice pretty painting fairly quickly. Pretty easy to do. They're not hard to do. Although they're out, they are harder when you don't have anybody to show you. If you're watching TV, it's, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this. You're watching Bob Ross on TV. The, it looks so easy, but when you start doing it yourself, uh, it turns out to be a little bit, bit more of a job to do. 
And don't forget, he practiced for years and he helped develop it. Well, he learned it from Bill Alexander, actually. But it's a good building block. Look at it that way. If you want to do traditional painting, you're going to be stepping off from that comfort zone. And believe me, when you start doing wet on wet, it's a comfort zone that's really hard to get out of if you don't make yourself do it. And it took me many, many, many years to do that. Because I was so used to being able to do a painting in a half an hour, hour tops if it's a really big one, or, that I was afraid to get out of that zone, get out of that uh, just doing wet on wet. But believe me, you it's got its own rewards if you do. Um, because it is a bit limited, and it's not quite as it's not as realistic really as a traditional painting style. If that's what you want eventually I mean look at you know Bob Ross and Bill Alexander they don't do much like portraits and things like that and still life there's not a lot of that being done I know some of them do flowers I think Kowalski does flowers and there's some others that do flowers and stuff and that's kind of treading toward more traditional but it does make a difference let me give you an example um, See, this is not a wet on wet. This is acrylic, but I just you saw this a minute ago. But that's just an acrylic painting, and it's a traditional painting, but it's done in acrylic. And I couldn't do that on wet on wet. Most likely, I couldn't. If you're doing, say, a portrait. I actually have some videos on on portraits that you can see, but uh, this is one I did recently. And this is far from wet on wet. And this is acrylic. You can do this in acrylic. And this is my great granddaughter, actually. And you can see where you can go with acrylics. And doing traditional painting. It does make a huge difference. So, if you have any questions, I love comments. Most people haven't been commenting, but I love to hear comments about it. If you got questions, I do read. Unlike a lot of people, I read all my comments. So if you have a question, ask. I'll be happy to get back with you. I do do lives. I try to do one once a week. Sometimes it's every other week, but I do do them in the hour later at night about 10.30. If people would like me to do lives during the day, I will. Just uh, leave comments and let me know. I do intend to be doing a live painting soon. Usually my internet's a problem with that, but we're going to try it and see how that works. So, going from there, if there's any other thing that you need some help with, Feel free to let me know. Uh, let your imagination run wild. Just start painting. That's the main thing. Start painting. Find something you want to paint and paint it. It doesn't matter if you want to just paint a picture of an apple. Paint it. Uh, a picture of a tree. Take a picture outside. Bring it in and paint it. It's not a problem. I'll have some more tips for easier ways to paint coming up soon uh, I know people say well I can't even draw a line well I can't draw that well either and you really don't have to surprisingly painting is a whole different ball game than drawing if you even if you want to do portraits there are easier ways to do them without having to draw the portrait and I can show you some of them tips and tricks as we move along so anyway you all have a great day and I hope you've all enjoyed this. Please leave some comments. Leave a like. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Check out some of the videos. And we'll catch you all later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.